It's Mickey Jake for One Brighton FM. I'm with superstar Miles Mosley here. Superstar! Superstar, you are indeed, my friend. Um, so yeah, I'd like to say uh, hello and thanks for giving us some of your time. So, named after Miles Davis, sounds like the love of jazz was something you were born into. Is there a particular family member uh, It was your main musical influence growing up in? Were they involved in music in some way themselves? Well, uh, Miles came from my mother, who was uh, a massive Miles Davis fan. And my, and she was actually a, a big UCF Latin, Latin fan as well. They couldn't decide on the name, and uh, I think my dad was, was leaning towards UCF, and he must have stepped out of the room for a second when, when at, right after I was born, and, and so it turned out to be Miles. And uh, I've always grown up listening to, to the great Miles Davis's records, and Sketches of Spain was a, was a favorite. It was always on on a Sunday when my dad was cooking or my mom was. Preparing the house and hanging out with the family and whatnot. Uh, and I have uh, some musicians on my father's side, uh, both uh, brothers, his brothers were in the military and uh, were you know, musicians in that, in that, to that extent, as well as uh, I have a lot of educators in my family. And so there's, there's a lot of that as well. But my immediate family, my mother and father, neither of them play music, but they love it. And I think you can really see the, what my combination is because it's like Otis Redding, Motown, Stack Stuff, Miles Davis, and Oscar Peterson, and then the you know, Laurel Canyon, Joni Mitchell, and Chill, you know, that is across the new section. Exactly. Cool. Um, so, you grew up in Hollywood, right? Yeah. And uh, what effect did that have on you, if any, um, for your development as a musician, being in that kind of la-la that that's yeah, the most yeah, people sure. refer to? Well, I think that uh, growing up, the West Coast Get Down is a whole group in Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is a big place, it's got a lot of different suburbs and stuff like that. But for me, I was uh, in, in, in all kind of all of the different areas of, of LA growing up. And, and as it pertains to Hollywood, I've been surrounded by show business. Sure. And so I understood early on that there's the music has to touch people in a, in a very immediate way but that there's also this massive visual that goes with it and, and so i think when you look at all the guys in the list let's get down and certainly me you know i'm up there wearing this big brass piece of armor with my logo on it you know uh, i think that's that's what i get from, from being a guy that grew up in, in, in hollywood and knowing that, that as long as the music is honest and the art is coming from an honest place you can add on top of that different types of represent icons that represent um, what you're up to musically. Sure. Okay, great stuff. Um, I heard you say in your show earlier, you, I was, that was one of my questions, was you classically trained, I understand. Um, so you started playing the upright bass at 13, uh, and what was the next move for you when you finished your formal training? What was your kind of plan? Did you have any go-to paths that you wanted to follow? Well, I knew that as soon as I picked up the upright bass, I'd say it only took a year or two before I felt like it was the only thing I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I had my classical training, which lasted clear through college. And I started studying jazz because I wanted to play. <laughs> because my mom would, would, would go, would have friends over and say, oh, well, play us a song that you know. But it, it, a lot of the music for that level of bass playing and classical music, you're just playing the whole notes. So you're not getting any of the melodies, you're not learning any of that stuff. Uh, so I wanted to learn songs that would make my mom be able to brag and feel proud about me. And so I learned all blues with a great bass line. And it's it's the anchor point of that song. Uh, so that was what made me fall in love with jazz as it, as, as it, as it goes to bass playing. And you know, those two things kind of ran concurrently for a long time. And then I grew up in the 90s, so I was all about grunge. And so songwriting was something that cycled around with me because my mom loved the Laurel Canyon version of stuff. So it was like 60s hippie, that's her grunge. You know? And for me, you know, Chris Cornell and, and, and Peter uh, uh, Pearl Jam, Dinosaur Jr., that was, those were my heroes. So, you know, I don't like that. Good stuff. Uh, so you've yeah, you collaborated in some, in some ways with some major players over years. Who was it, or was there an actor or band you played with that really brought you to prominence and gave you that taste of worldwide success? Was that touring the epic, or was that something you kind of 
I think we all had the taste of doing big festivals like we're at today.